days ago, Peter Obi was in London at the Trade and Investment Summit where he gave an amazing speech. Now, a lot of people felt maybe it was because of the campaign, the 2023 presidential campaign, that was why this man um, was always everywhere, you know, traveling left and right. But it has come to, um, to open up that that is how busy he has always been all his life. Now, today he was in Port Harcourt for the 60th Jubilee anniversary of an orphanage where usually, as he always do, he donated heavily to this particular one. Yes, the, the orphanage has been in operation for over 60 years and he was there to celebrate with them. This is the highlight from that one. Don't forget to subscribe. Drop a comment below. We recognize the presence of all the priests and reverend sisters that are here. Please. Please. Your Grace, my Lord, Reverend Fathers, Reverend Sisters, let me stand, dear mothers and fathers, let me stand on all you and existing protocols. Father said you would like me to tell you what you will hear. I don't know where to start. Let me first of all thank um, Sister former for this um, when I started this journey I got an invitation which quite frankly I did not know much about this congregation but sister the former insisted I want you to come to this occasion and I said sister I'm not going to be in the country I'm delivering a lecture at the Commonwealth Business Summit in London on the 28th and this event is on the 29th. There's no way I can come back. And sister said to me, I will pray that they change the date. <laughs> and I said, okay. Of course, you're nearer to God than me. So if you pray and God answers it, I will assure you I will come. That I'm going to live on the 26th and I left the country on the 26th. And behold, I arrived on the 27th. And they said to me, Peter, you have two things you are supposed to do on Tuesday. One is your lecture. Two is your meeting the Prime Minister of Samoa. They've all been changed to Monday. So Tuesday is free for you. And I called sister. I said, sister, once I finish, I'll jump into the plane on Tuesday night. And I arrived, left London last night with Veg. And I arrived this morning. Took the first flight to Port Harcourt. I said, sister, so sister, I'm here. But I must thank God that I came here to listen to what you're doing. I've read it and listened to it. And I know by our fathers and the Lord that are here, I know they take what you're doing serious. But as I was listening today, I was telling somebody, I said, how can somebody say it's caring for the poor in Nigeria? When you have the highest number of poor people living in the world in one country. So how can you care for them? You are caring for everybody in Nigeria. Because we're all poor. But thank you. All I can say to you is that I thank God I'm here. You've got a partner in this business. Because I'm not going to only support you. I'm going to preach to other people to support you. Because you're doing the right thing. Our life is meaningless unless we care for the poor. Our life is meaningless unless we care for those who are less privileged in our midst. And I will finally say to you, since using your sister former and Please pray more for us, the politicians. Always remember us in your prayers. The country of Africa is destroyed today 
and you have poor people, nothing else except we, the politicians, the leaders, doing the wrong thing. There's nothing. My lecture in the UK was harnessing opportunities in Africa. When I finished, one of the ministers who was there said, Peter, what you're saying is not true. What do you think? I said, listen, there's no country where that is God blessed more than he blessed Africa. No other continent of the world. I told him, I said, in Congo, the country with the biggest natural resources on earth is Congo. Measured at 24 trillion. Yet Congo has the second highest number of people in poverty. After that is Nigeria. What we have here, if we utilize it very well, you won't be caring for the poor, you'll be caring for the rich. But unfortunately, people like me have turned the whole place into a giant criminal enterprise. And when criminals are poor, they don't, they don't, they're still without meaning. So, remember us in prayers that God should touch our heart to use public money for public good. It will go a long way. And I thank you for what you're doing. Thank all our fathers in faith and everybody for what you're doing. May God continue to bless this congregation and all of us who are going to partner with you. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We thank His Excellency Peter B. so much. Can we put our hands together for him once again? Please, before I, I invite the Auxiliary Bishop of Portacot Diocese, Most Reverend Dr. Patrick Eluke, I call on Sister now for the brief announcement on what comes after all this coming. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Immediately after the Mass, Your Excellencies, please, we'll have a group photograph here before the conclusion of the procession. It will be done here. And we beg you to give us to be a little bit patient with us to take the snapshots. We'll be very fast about it. And then after that, we'll all process to the site for the planting of the jubilee tree please our sisters in charge of that will direct us on how we will move every other in the second part of the event will be here in this venue please we want to appeal not all of us we go for the planting of the tree because of space and time so the persons who would go are the bishop and the priest the sisters your excellency Peter will be the chairman of the occasion. I think these, the other dignitaries, the sisters will pick them and tell them. But the rest of us will stay here. Just stay here. It's still part of the Jubilee celebration. And you can say a little bit of prayer for us too. The Mass is the highest prayer. And God will bless you. And like we said, the second part of the occasion is here. Just relax. We have enough for you. It's our day. Thank you. The entertainment and every other thing will be here. Thank you. Please, we invite immediately the Provincial of the Daughters of Charity. Our founder, St. Vincent de Paul, said that if you are to speak at all, let it be that of gratitude for benefits received. And in the same vein, his senior colleague in heaven, St. Ignatius Loyola, considered ingratitude as the worst of sins. So it's on this note I stand in your presence this afternoon to appreciate you, to say thank you for making our day. I'll begin with the princes of the church, the archbishop, the bishops, for making your time, making our time to be with us today. We are very, very grateful. I know that many people are dying to catch the flight, to catch flight to different places, so it's going to be very brief. 
I want to thank all the priests, the very reverend fathers, the reverend fathers, the religious, the consecrated persons in our midst, for making this day a very, very happy day for us. We are very grateful. I want to avoid the temptation of calling names because in the process you may miss out some people. But permit me to thank our Mother General in a very special way, the person of Sister Francoise Potit. Please put your hands together for her. It is our Mother General's first visit to Nigeria. She resides in France, in Paris in, to be particular. And Mother, despite all the warnings he was, she was given not to come to Nigeria, Nigeria is dangerous, you know all the news about Nigeria. She said, her children are here. And she did it, and she came. Since last Sunday, she's been moving around different parts of the country, and she's very happy. Thank you very much. She came in the company of our general counselor, the person of Sister Teresa Ike. Thank you. And I want to also thank all our Irish sisters, our sisters from Kenya, Ireland, from Kenya. Congo, um, and Cameroon, and other provinces of Africa. They are here to rejoice with us. We are very, very grateful. What are we celebrating? Our bishop told us in the beginning that it is 60 years. We are celebrating 60 solid years of God's goodness to us. 60 solid years of serving the poor, serving Christ in the poor, not only in Nigeria, but in Ghana and Burkina Faso. And all these years, it has not been easy, like His Excellency recognized and said to us, it's been very difficult. It's because of the collaboration of some people that we are able to make it. And that is why I will single out His Excellency, the person of, we call him Peter O.B. because he's very simple. So, Your Excellency, I'm very, very grateful. You have said you are going to partner with us. And you are a man of your word. When I told him about this celebration, I don't know, I've never met him. I just called him and I told him about the celebration. And I told him about the poor. And because of his love for the poor, he said he would be here. But along the line, he discovered that it would be difficult. And he said, I may not be able to make it. Unless, let's see, I said, Your Excellency, I will pray. Our Mother Mary is the chairman of this occasion, of the planning committee, that she will make it possible. And she did. Please, let us clap for our Mother. Why I'm thanking him in particular is because he left London, like he said, last evening in the, in the night. And he arrived at Abuja this morning. Like he told me, he said, I will run like a madman across from international to domestic so that I can catch the first flight to Port Harcourt. Because if I miss it, it will be around after 10. I'll get the next one. And this morning, he called me, he said, I am in Port Harcourt. So, Your Excellency, you are a promise keeper. And I know you have said you are going to support us, and you will do it. Thank you. So, I also thank all our invited guests, all the people we serve that are here in our midst, Daughters of Charity, we devote our life for the service of the poor. St. Vincent, our founder, called them um, lords and our masters. The lords, the poor are our lords and our masters. Many of them are here. 
Um, there is somebody on wheelchair, he's a medical person, trained by Daughters of Charity, the man that came in, and others here, you see the interpreters, because we have children who do not hear, I mean, um, hard of hearing, because if I say they are deaf, the special teachers here will crucify me, they say you don't use that word. So they are hard of hearing. So all our invited guests, all our um, people, um, our lords and masters that we serve that are here, you have really, really made our day. Because there is an evil adage that says, you cannot call and answer yourself. We called you and you answer. And so we are celebrating and we are rejoicing because you have come to answer us and you left everything to be with us. I am very, very grateful. I thank you on behalf of the province of Nigeria. And we pray that as you go back, that the Lord will continue to guide you safely to your destination. And before I come down, I will leave the state. I want to please appeal to you that you support us. We have a Jubilee project, which, was, which is our um, retreat block, our retreat house. This house was built in the 80s by the Irish sisters. Then our number was still very small. But today we have over 170 daughters of charity. And we use this retreat house for retreats and other events. So it is now too small and is dilapidated and um, it's not in good condition. So we want to use this uh, Jubilee celebration to dare to raise the money from within. Uh, you know, the money from outside the country is dwindling because they say Nigeria is very rich. So our sisters outside, yeah, it's very difficult for them to get money for us. So we have this project, a very big dream. 500 million naira very big 500 we dare to dream and we hope and pray that you will help us to realize our dreams and that through your assistance which many of you i have to really thank all those who have uh, contributed so far but we still need more oliver twist is asking for more so we'll be very very grateful if you can help us because our services are not services that generate money. Instead, they are services that you keep putting in, taking mentally ill women from the road and taking care of them, deaf children with special needs, tuberculosis, leprosy. They are not, they are not wonderful um, in the eyes of the world, big institutions, big apostolates that we generate funds for you. Instead, we keep putting in. So we would rely on you to help us to achieve this dream. And uh, finally, I want to thank all those who have supported us in different ways to um, achieve to, for our celebration today. Um, His Excellency, Most Reverend Etokudo, he's not here. He sent us a cow. And please put your hands together for him. And our brothers from Ogoni Axis, the priests and sisters of Ogoni Axis, sent us another cow yesterday. And when our mother general heard a cow, she said, Cow? What are you celebrating? We said, He said, You are going to slaughter a cow? I said, Yes. He said, Magnificent. So I told her that that is how we celebrate and that's how people support us. So we are really, really very grateful. Thank you so very much. Yes. Um, I will not leave here without saying a very, very big thank you to the Bishop of the Diocese who has been a father to us. He's been very, very good. And um, he is here, represented by his auxiliary, who also is a brother. He's a brother. He's been very good to us. We are very, very grateful to you, my Lord, for your kindness to us, for all you have been doing, and 
we beg you to please take our gratitude to His Excellency and tell him that we are very grateful that Mother, here we have, I, I told you the other day that we have fathers in this place who take good care of us. So we are very, very grateful. Thank you so very much. May God carry each and every one of you safely to your different destinations through Christ our Lord. Thank you.